If you clicked on this video, you may be a lot like me when I was getting ready to graduate with my counseling degree. I realized in my last semester that no one ever told me what we could expect to make as therapists and counselors in our field. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Alyssa Powers and I teach you what grad school didn't so you can thrive in the mental health field. I'm a therapist who lives in Ohio and I own my own private practice. So money is an extra taboo topic in our field because we live with the sentiment that we didn't get into the mental health field to make money. We got into the field because we want to help people, which is probably very true, but we also deserve as master level clinicians to make a living wage. I don't think that's too much to ask. So it begs the question, how much do therapists actually make? So the hard thing about this question is that there is a huge range based off of what state you live in, what kind of work you end up doing, what degree you have. So on the high end, you could work for yourself in private practice and probably make six figures. On the low end, you could work for an agency and probably start out in the mid 30,000s. So there's a huge range there and there's obviously a ton of in between. So in this video, I hope to give you an accurate view of how much you could expect to make depending on your specific situation. So I'm gonna give you real numbers based off of my own salary as a clinician in private practice. And I'm also going to give you lots of tips and tricks to identify your specific situation and how you can research based off of that. So if you've done any amount of Googling about this already, you've probably seen the number 78,000, which is what comes up as the average therapist salary, but it doesn't tell us anything about job setting, location, how many years in the field that person is working. Um, it really is an average, which probably does make sense because we see on the low end in the 30,000s and then in the high end in the six figures. So 78 probably is an average across all of those, but it doesn't really necessarily indicate anything to you if you are a first year clinician or starting out as a therapist or thinking about switching jobs. So it pretty much tells us nothing. A couple tools that are gonna help you on this journey of figuring out what kind of salary you can expect are going to be Glassdoor, ZipRecruiter, and then just plain old word of mouth and interviewing therapists. So I'm going to use Ohio as the example and read you the numbers that I found on these websites. And we can just get a little bit of a look at what this is gonna entail. So in Ohio, starting out at an agency, it says you can expect to make 44,000 a year. Starting out in private practice, you can expect to make 57,000 a year. Starting out in a hospital setting, you can expect to make 49,000 a year. An addiction counselor can expect to make 51,000 a year. And starting in a nonprofit space, you could expect to make 50,000 a year. So this is Ohio and these are some very loose numbers <laughs> that I found but this is what's reported by people with actual salaries on Glassdoor. So it is helpful to see that range. So now I wanted to dig into my own numbers and give you a little bit of context about what my post-grad salary looked like. So right after grad school, I went into a group private practice where the split was 40-60. So that means that I gave 40% of everything I made to the group practice to my boss, and then I got to take home 60% of that, as well as I had to pay taxes on that 60%. So at that time, I probably saw around 20 to 30 clients a week. And in that first year, I made $55,000. I was very pleased with that at the time. 
And I thought that was awesome. And then in my second year, I was doing the same kind of split and I made 58,000. I think I did work a little bit less that year and probably just had some higher self-paying clients. I did work for a group practice that accepted insurance. So that's something to keep in mind too, that then insurance is dictating how much you're getting paid. So I think our lowest payer paid around $75 and our highest payer paid around $110. So there's a pretty big difference there. So looking at my numbers for 2020, it was such a mess because I got my second C. So that changed the split from 40-60 to 30-70 at the group practice. And then I also opened up my own practice that year and left my group practice. And of course, we all know what happened in March of 2020. So I got a huge influx of clients. So that year was just a mess and not very indicative of what I think you could expect to make. Um, but now current day, I make around 85,000 a year. I see 15 to 20 clients a week, probably more on the low end of that these days. I see about 15 a week and I still do accept two different insurances and I have some self-pay clients. So I'm really happy with that income. I work very part-time and I'm able to make a very sustainable living from that. So those are some of my numbers. Another reason these numbers can be so tricky to come up with are that counseling and therapy jobs are set up in all different kinds of ways. So some therapy jobs are giving you full benefits and that makes a huge difference versus in private practice, you often are not offered benefits, you're paying taxes yourself, you're doing maybe a 40-60 split or a 50-50 split with the group practice owner. Um, you need to think about your commute time if you're working somewhere that's further away from home. And then things like your productivity expectations. Are you expected to see a certain amount of clients? Are you getting referrals from your group practice owner? Or are you expected to do that yourself? So basically looking at what's going to be included in these jobs, because a job that offers you full health care and benefits is going to have a different monetary value than a job that isn't, but maybe you're making a little bit more. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, when we look at master's level therapists, it says that they were most frequently reporting a number around 50 to 52,000 a year. And this was recorded in the year 2020. So hopefully it's gone up a little bit since then with inflation. But I would say on average, doing all of this research for this video, this is a pretty reliable statistic. It seems like, of course, there are things on the low end and the high end, but it looks like around the $50,000 range is the most common. So the last thing I wanted to do is give you some tips for finding out your actual numbers because I know these averages are probably only so helpful. And to be honest, I think these averages really have a lot to do with where you live and your specific area's cost of living. So the first place I would go, other than Glassdoor, ZipRecruiter, those kind of websites, I actually have found great success looking on Reddit. So if you look in the therapy subreddit, the social work subreddit, the psychology subreddit, there are things called salary mega threads. I'm not the best at knowing the Reddit lingo. Um, where people will post how much they made in the past year and it will all be, you know, based off of their location, which is really, really cool. And they'll say, you know, I'm in private practice or I'm at this kind of agency or I work in a hospital. So I have found that to be so helpful, that real world data. Another way to get that real world data is from just interviewing therapists that are working at places you're interested in. So I know when I was in my last semester of grad school, I interviewed a woman who worked for an agency that I was interested in applying to. And she told me <laughs> that she made around 35,000 a year, which my 
career in teaching was very comparable to that. I actually was making maybe even a little more than that at the time. So I was like, oh no, I got a master's degree and I'm gonna make less, this is horrible. Um, and she said the only reason she could even afford to work at that agency is because her husband had a good job. So that could be a whole other video on why, you know, therapists are master level clinicians. We are not doing this as a hobby. We should absolutely get paid a living, sustainable, independent wage. But that was good for me to find out at the time because then I knew, okay, I'm not going to apply for that agency because that's not a salary that I would be okay with. So the last thing that I just wanted to mention because private practice is kind of its own beast is that if you are interested in working for a group practice, it's really important to ask about what kind of split they do in terms of your salary and what benefits are offered because oftentimes there are no benefits in private practice. So that's really something to think about. If you're not married, you're not getting spousal benefits, then that's going to be on you to pay for that. And that in America is a huge expense, as you know. Um, and my last tip for private practice or private practice curious peeps is that there are so many awesome private practice salary calculators online now. So if you Google that, um, I know Simple Practice has one that's really nice and you don't have to have a Simple Practice account. I do think you have to give them your email, which is a little annoying, but Therapy Den has one. So basically what this is, is you put in like, here's how many clients I wanna see per week. Here's how much I would be charging them if it's self-pay. Here's how much insurance would cost. Here's my overhead and it will calculate out here's how much you can expect to make a year. And I think that is just so awesome because it makes you think about all those other expenses of like, are you renting an office space? Uh, you're obviously paying taxes and there's just so much to think about. So that could be a whole separate thing, but I did wanna throw that out there because I would have absolutely loved to have that tool when I was getting into private practice so I could kind of crunch my numbers because you don't really know until the end of the year how much you're gonna make. So I hope you found this video helpful. Please leave a comment below about what state you work in and what your experience has been with figuring out how much you can make as a therapist or if you are a therapist, if you feel comfortable sharing your numbers, I would be so curious to hear how things differ from state to state and different licenses and all that good stuff. So if you liked this video, please like and subscribe. It helps my channel so much and I'll see you in the next one.